Hello, this is uh, Richard Cespedes again, and uh, I'm here with uh, um, another idea, another uh, way to basically um, describe um, how we would go about um, like creating artificial intelligence. Like this is an idea that I've had since 2003 when I was younger, and uh, I'm pretty sure since then, 12 years ago, scientists already came up with this idea through trial and error and all that. But the way I see it is that in order for a robot to have appropriate artificial intelligence, you have to implement um, more intricacy in the program and in, in the software and programming of the of um, of the thought process of the of the specific robot in question. You know, um, you always see on YouTube or on news. Um, you always have a robot hand, you know. Um, I think it's more, it's different now. More, uh, there's more robots walking around and all that. But usually, you have a robot hand, and they they try to drop a ball, and the ball falls through, and they try to grab it, and it shows a little robot with a hand, arm and a hand, and these kind of micro um, camera eyes, and it shows it kind of going down and trying to grab the ball. And the thing is, though, is that um, in order. For true intelligence to exist for a, an android, we need to make, we need to apply em, um, um, emotion, cause every thought that we, every thought that we um, that we do, every reaction, every every time we answer a question, there's always an emotional. Uh, 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 I would say um, every person has an emotional response to it. Everything that we do is emotionally driven, personally driven. A, a, an android has to have a personal, a personal, um, a personal sense of self. And and in order for it for artificial intelligence to really exist, we can't just have a cut and dry, simple, um, just thought process of just trying to grab the ball that falls through the hand and pick it up because nothing is really happening the android is not thinking or nothing you have to create a software that implements much more complexity to the personality of the robot personality also comes from the 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 um, the, the, the the personal emotions that an individual has that's how a person creates personality is the experiences that's a uh, that's uh, um, formed over years of meeting and greeting people in life. An android has to have has to um artificial intelligence for an android has to um mimic that type of thinking because when you when, if you're gonna ask if you're gonna you have to have robot almost have a brain almost as an animal like whenever you you see um orangutans doing tests. And sometimes the doctors want the orangutan to do the touch the screen and to, uh, you know, a answer a question and to uh, press what shape on the screen is correct. And then they get a treat. But sometimes the, the orangutans don't want to answer the question. Sometimes within a, for a whole week, they're just defiant. And robots, in order for artificial intelligence to really exist, the robot needs to have an emotional attachment to their existence, to their response, you know, um, and, 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 and they need to be almost animalistic in terms of their response, you know, then we could build and, sophist and make their artificial intelligence more sophisticated, to become more human-like, because an android needs to be able to have its own selfishness, how does this gain, why do I want to pick up that ball? You know they have to think to themselves, why do I want to pick up the ball? I don't want to. Feel, I don't feel like picking up that ball today. You know why do they keep on bothering me? You know um, how does this benefit me? That's that's what a robot has to be thinking. That the software has to implement. They they have to implement this emotion to the software. The engineers of the software have to implement this to the to the um to the very the 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 the, the artificial construct the being of the robot you know the robot just can't be just a simple cut and dry grab the ball and put in the bucket no it has to be the robot has to have more complexity to it because for every 
because you know we could program a robot to pick up the ball but it's not really learning or doing anything it's just uh, it's just a program picking up the ball it's responding it's looking at the ball and it picks it up but it's not really going on nothing in the head of the robot so we need to implement personalization to the robot um, greed and, and, and enviousness and jealousy all those things come from emotion there's a lot of complexity to how we need to uh, create um, the artificial intelligence for a robot to be as human as a, um, be as, as um, realistic to be as human as possible and it isn't just programming something to just drive and to avoid um, you know you have these cars that avoid this you know they're, they're driving in the, in the dunes driving these cars and races and stuff you can't just have it just be like just avoiding the sides and just kind of calculating uh, not driving off to, uh, off the road there has to be something more to it instead of having a program built into it we need to create a program that allows the robot to expand and think and to build upon um, so it could learn just like how the neurons in the brain of a human constantly are being broken down and being rebuilt because it's learning experiences from its environments and along that because of pain and personal turmoil and of uh, doubt, all those things need to be implemented in the in the in the in the AI of the robot. You know, um, and, uh, applying an emotion to its decision making will help to lead us to the construct of a appropriate AI for robots. And uh, I also want to talk about nanotechnology nanotechnology I think that the best way to use nanotechnology we can't use light to be shot through the air and and create something to bend the light to create the shape that we want that's um, that's almost impossible so the best next thing is to use nanobots or pickle bots real small small bots and just have these millions of bots or thousands of bots come out from the device and have it be to have it create the, the shape that we want like an arm you know, like if we have millions of bots building this arm, if there's going to be motion, all the bots need to move uniformly together because the front of the bots are going to be moving together, but then the back, everything's going to be disassembling as it shifts through the air, disassembling in the back. So everything, all of the nanobots need to be communicating together so when they move, they need to communicate and move exactly at the same time so that the object that they're creating in the air remains solid through motion and that's what we need to do with nanobots to create like an uh, a sense of holograph hologram um, type of uh, floating imagery in midair you know and uh, nanobots being assembled together could create create a much more solid image than just light bending and having a transparent image in the air and um, if you want, we could also have the, all, all each of the nanobots to be, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a lot of money, but that's probably the only way we can do. But we could have all the little nanobots be lit up, changing colors, and uh, um, all have their own LED light, you know, so um, they could they could mimic a holo uh, uh, a Star Wars hologram, you know. Like you always see in Star Wars, you know, the hologram, it can mimic that, that, that flickering and that glow that we see holograms in TV and movies a lot. You know, um, it could do lots of things, but uh, the hologram technology, the, holo the nanobots will have to be floating and have to be just communicating together, seamlessly communicating together to create a sense of motion that's more flowing to, to make the solid, make the image more solid, more realistic. And uh, that's just uh, my idea, and um, uh, I think that's it for right now. Thank you very much, Richard Cespedes. Thank you for watching.